Hi everyone, welcome to Every Day, your daily stop for virtual reality content. My name is Dee, and today we are checking out VR Comenius, an educational application of the Oculus Rift Development Kit 1. It is uh, named after John Amos Comenius, who was an educational innovator in Europe in the 17th century. Among other things, he introduced pictorial textbooks, which I think makes this um, an appropriate name for the application. It was developed uh, by a set of developers in the Czech Republic, uh, which was assembled from uh, developers of previous VR experiences, among them uh, Tomáš Mariancic, who was the developer of the Sightline prototype that I looked at in an earlier video, as well as the hardware developers of the RiftUp system. RiftUp is a uh, system for taking a Oculus Rift DK1 and replacing the screen with a higher resolution 1080p display in order to improve resolution. Um, so this is an anatomy demo, a human anatomy. It shows you a human body, and then it allows you to explore different parts of the body, turn various pieces of it on and off, pick up pieces of it, and rearrange it. It is based on the, uh, the Oculus Rift as well as the Razer Hydra. The Razer Hydra is uh, two controllers that you hold in your hands. They're attached by wires to a base, and you, um, by moving your hands around in space, it tracks the position and orientation of your hands. So we're going to use this to manipulate the, the model, as well as to uh, control, this, uh, control what bits are turned off and on. You'll see. Without further ado, let's jump into VR Comenius. All right, here I am in VR Comenius. I am inside a room, just a brick room with some sofas and stuff. Down here below me is the VR Union logo, and over there is their animated logo bit. And in front of me is the model. So I'm going to start by picking up my Razor Hydra, and I'm going to hit my start buttons to calibrate. So the start buttons are the little buttons in the middle of the controllers. And there we go. Uh, my left hand's adjusted not quite right. Uh, there we go. Close enough. Okay. So I can move my hands around. They have laser pointers attached to them, so I can point at particular parts of the model and be like, that's the head, yo. That's the arm. That is the torso. And up there are the bits that I can turn on and off. I can't read check, but if I just turn them on and off, I get a good idea of what they are. So, for example, uh, Kuze is the skin. If I turn that off, the guy has no more skin. And now his skin is back. So I'm just going to walk up to this guy. Hello, guy. And I'm going to make him a little bit bigger, because right now he is uh, rather shorter than me. And I, I would feel like this is more natural if he is uh, the same height as me. So I'm actually going to uh, press both of, my, uh, both of my trigger buttons on both controllers, which will close my fist. And then I will push my hands apart like I'm manipulating, um, like I'm manipulating, say, Google Maps on a mobile device. Just push my hands apart like a zoom gesture, and he gets bigger. Bigger, he can actually become arbitrarily large. So, like, if I wanted to make him look like a titan, I could just turn off his skin and then, like, make him super huge. He's so big! Except titans don't have genitals, so I would turn that off, too. And there we go. Now he's a titan. Okay, enough of that. This is a little bit creepy, actually. Like, his feet are like, wow, they're like the size of small cats. Okay, come down here. Come down to normal human size. Okay, there we go. And so you can get as close as you want. As you get really close, you start to clip into the model with the near clipping plane, like that. And you can actually walk directly through it, which is kind of creepy, like this. And you can see everything on the inside as you walk through it. And I can walk through the chest if I want to. And this is especially creepy inside VR because you can see everything in 3D as you're walking through it. This is what I think ghosts would feel like if they walk uh, through people's bodies in real life. Okay. And I seem to have been accidentally removing various parts of him as I do this, so that's like his chest muscle. So you can move everything around as much as you want to. 
There's another muscle. There's a rib cage. You can hold it up to your face, get a good look at it. Get over there, rib cage. And if I hit the R key on my keyboard, it puts everything back. Back it goes. So that's the basic controls. I'm going to tell you what all these buttons do now. So this is the skin, as I showed earlier. This is the muscles. Now that the muscles are off, I have a better view of the skeleton and internal organs. This one is, I believe, the skeleton. Yep. So if I turn off the skeleton, then I could see the internal organs better, the, the nervous system, the circulatory system, and the organs, all that stuff. And the brain, of course. This next one. What did I just turn off? Let me see. Okay, I think that's, yeah, that's the circulatory system. So you can see the heart appearing and disappearing as I do that, along with all of the blood vessels. So that's the circulatory system. If I get up super close, circulatory system appearing and disappearing, just like that. This next one, um, this is the reproductive system. So you can see if I look down as I press this one, that's just appearing and disappearing, the testes and penis of this model. The next one is, I don't know what that one is. OK, let me get a closer look. Okay, that appears to be um, the lungs. So this is probably the respiratory system, the lungs and diaphragm. Going to leave that on. He needs to, actually, I'm going to turn this off, get a better view of the internal organs. And now if I turn off the circulatory system, you will see the heart disappearing a lot better, just like that. This next one is the, um, did I already do this one? Yeah, I did. No, wait, no, I didn't. Okay, this is, I think this is the digestive system. I think, yeah, that's the stomach and intestines that are appearing and disappearing there. And then the lymphatic system. I can read that word and check. It's pretty clear. So that's like the uh, coating on the lips and intestines, as well as... Uh, the lymph nodes, that you can see those white nodes throughout the body. Especially under the arms, places like that. And there's some, like, in front of the heart there. Yep. So, lymph nodes. Nervosa sustava, that's the nervous system, which includes the brain. No more brain. Our guy is now brain dead. As well as the yellow nerves that are going throughout the body. So if I go to the arm here, I can see the nerves going through the arm. And Oda, Oda, I don't know what that means, but it's these blue bars that are around him. I think those indicate the extent of how far he can reach. And that is the basics of the system. So you can go around him and view him from any angle. You can view from the back. You can go right into the middle, like I did earlier. You can get as close as you want to any part. If I want to look at his head, I can bring him down here. Oops, I didn't mean to remove that. Get back in there, lymph, lymph nodes. Okay. And so with, at this, I could get a closer look at his brain. And I could take his brain out. Take, take a direct look at it. And you can just move things out of the way so you can get a better look at other things. Like now we can see this part in the back of the brain that we couldn't see before. And th I think this offers so many opportunities just for allowing people to get a real hands-on feeling for the complex construction of the human body and, and to, to play around with it and explore without having any particular goal in mind. Um, you could imagine conducting biology labs in here, having people 
like go through um explore things and come up with like ideas like um like they might like for example look at a particular part of the system and wonder like well like um they might wonder why the lymph nodes are here on the elbow but they don't extend all the way to the fingers things like that and once they start to formulate those kind of questions then you can bring in you can bring in instructors who can help to explain why these things are the way they are and i i really like that kind of exploratory learning where you can really just kind of use a use a system to formulate your your questions about about the topic area as opposed to just being instructed in it from beginning to end and 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 this is uh the stereoscopy works really well in this application in terms of because uh because everything is made out of these these veins and and um and nerves and things that are very thin and wire like that makes it easy for you to use stereoscopy to um differentiate things that are in front from things that are in back and see both of them at the same time um which is more difficult to do on a monitor so i think that works really well in the rift um you have a good sense of scale, so I can compare, for example, the size of the brain here to the size of, say, the the hand. Can can you hold a brain in your hand like this? Looks like it's it's about the right size. You could hold your own brain, I think. Yeah, I think so. So just you know, size comparisons that you can make visually using the sense of scale inside the inside the rift. There's lots of advantages to doing this inside of VR that I think are really promising, and. And it's also just cheap. Like normally, if you wanted to have a model like this in your biology classroom, you would have like one of them, and you would not be letting your kids take it apart because then you would have to put it back together, and they would probably break it. It would be a giant pain in the ass. But with this, you can uh, you have the freedom to manipulate it in any way you want, like it was a real thing. And when you're done, you can just hit R, and it all goes back, and other people can play with it, so you don't have to worry about it. And I think that kind of um, that kind of ability to explore a system without um, at very low cost without having to worry about consequences is part of what makes it really appealing for education. And yeah, I think this is all I want to see here. So um, I think I've said about all I want to say about this. So uh, let me know your thoughts on VR Comenius and kind of any other systems you think would be interesting to explore inside of VR and other possible education applications you can think of. Let me know any other demos you want me to play. I will be resuming Zelda VR tomorrow, and that's all for today. Everybody have a great every day.